After completing my fourth year as a college coach, I would lead one of the most prolific offenses of all time to a national championship. From there, you guys decided that I should become the head coach of the East Carolina Pirates. ECU has a decent football program, but they were missing the leadership aspect of their team. Once I came in, I was able to turn their program around in one year, getting close to 10 wins. Going into my second season with the team, I was feeling confident that we would be able to capitalize on the success of my first year with the team and build more momentum. Over one year, I was able to pull in a top 15 recruiting class, and those players would be the future of our school. Last video, I asked you guys what the future of the team should look like and the majority vote was to keep Taylor Harris as our starting quarterback while letting our freshman redshirt. Harris would be a good quarterback, his only flaw was inconsistency, and I would also be converting five-star athlete Rick Pollock from wide receiver to running back for the upcoming season to help bring some speed to the position. Going into year number two, we only had one player above 90 overall, and as mentioned prior, we were looking to build on the momentum that our first season gave us. The team would jump from high 70s to 83 overall, and last season we lost our bowl game to UNC, so we are looking to get some revenge going into this one. As per usual, it was a rainy day on our home campus, so we knew that we were going to be facing some troubles going into this one, and even though our offense drove down the majority of the field, we were unable to score getting stopped on fourth down, but luckily our defense was better than it was last year as they were able to get a stop on UNC's first drive. Last season, Taylor Harris would show spurts that he could be a great quarterback, so I was hoping that he can get it more in tune this season, and throughout the first half so far, even though we don't have any points on the board, he was seeing the field very well, and he was throwing good balls, and after getting us down the field again, Rick Pollock was able to get his first touchdown of his career. As mentioned prior, our defense had made a big step over the offseason, leading to them getting an interception right here, and with limited time left on the clock, Taylor Harris was able to make a great drive, throwing a wide open and Andrew Johnson for a big play. It wouldn't be until late in the third quarter until UNC was able to finally get some offensive production and they were able to cut the lead down to seven. But that didn't matter as our offense was looking unstoppable and Taylor Harris found Mark Williams over the middle and I was extremely pleased with how the team was looking. From there, we'd be able to hold on to our lead as we had a great win to start the season. We'd be home yet again hosting another ranked opponent in 15 West Virginia and the team was confident coming off of their good game against UNC but Taylor Harris started things off poorly as he threw an interception and the West Virginia defender was able to take it all the way down to the end zone for a pick six. Our defense and offense have been playing poorly and before we knew it, we were down 21 points. Throughout the rest of the game, the team still wasn't playing that well as Taylor Harris had several interceptions up until this point. We were still down by 21 late in the fourth quarter and Andrew Johnson made a big play here. And Taylor Harris wasn't seeing the field as good as he did the first time as he tried to pass it to our tight end which ended up getting intercepted yet again. And we suffered a crushing defeat as this game proved we still weren't ready for top level talent. Even though we're only a couple of weeks into the season, recruiting wasn't going that well as we weren't leading on anybody. And we were looking to get things back rolling against Navy. I knew this team was extremely talented and I was hoping that game against West Virginia didn't determine the rest of our season. And Taylor Harris has already seen the field a lot better as he was getting the drive down but he ended up fumbling the ball to open up the game but luckily our defense was able to stop navy to a three now and taylor harris was able to find his guy on the right side and later on that drive chip johnson was able to get wide open on the slant route for an easy touchdown our defense would give up a touchdown almost immediately but taylor harris was able to find andrew johnson streaking up the seam for a touchdown and with less than two minutes left in the first half taylor harris was rolling out right and somehow was able to find andrew johnson streaking over the middle after the bounce back route and he was able to get close to the red zone and on the very next play harris showed great poise in the pocket he's able to find mark williams over the middle i was extremely pleased with the outcome of the first half up until this point and things would get even better in the second half and Navy wouldn't score until late in the fourth quarter. This game was an absolute blowout but there was bad news as our star running back Rick Pollock was going to be out for three weeks and what was a good team overall win. We'd be traveling to Virginia to take on the Hokies in the next one and starting off in the second quarter things were looking decent as we were up by six points and our defense was able to hold them down to three points. Our offense without Rick Pollock had been struggling up until this point as our run game wasn't much of anything and it would get even worse as our backup running back had some broken ribs and would be out multiple games. Defense would be the talk of the town in the first half as each team had less than 14 points and I wasn't too upset with how this game has been going as Virginia Tech was ranked 12th in the nation and was a good formidable opponent and our offense yet again wasn't able to drive down all the way but we were able to get a field goal extending the lead and from there our defense was able to get another three and out and our offense was trying to run out the ball and that's exactly what we were able to do in a six point victory of Virginia Tech and a game where Harris put up some amazing stats. Through five weeks there still hasn't been anyone that is committed to the team and against FIU we were looking to absolutely dominate. Coming out of halftime we were up by 23 points and we were looking to show no signs of slowing down especially after a couple of rough games on offense and we were by far the better team considering we were playing a D2 opponent, and this game went exactly as it should have as we were up by 37 points late in the fourth quarter and we were able to get another stop on third down and what would overall be a 40-point shutout. After that game, we were finally leading on some of the big prospects that we were going after, and it was time to begin conference play against Coastal Carolina where we were hosting them at home. There were several bye weeks between this one and the last one, so it was great to see Rick Pollock finally back in the offense, and I definitely missed having a running back that could actually outrun a defender and Rick Pollock because everyone else was extremely slow, and late in the second quarter with only a minute and a half left, we finally got our offense down the field and Jacob Fitch was able to get the ball out of the back field and take it all the way in for the end zone. Coastal Carolina didn't trust their kicker so they ended up going for it with time expiring and we were able to stop them which meant that we were able to come out of the first half up by four points and Taylor Harris was getting off to a good start as he was running the read option perfectly. Taylor Harris has been proving throughout this season that he should be the starting quarterback as he'd been making some good throws and every now and then his inconsistency would show but that wouldn't happen in this game as Rick Pollock was able to extend the lead by 17 and what would be a good debut game as we would end up holding that lead throughout the rest of it. Halfway through the season we were sitting at the top of the conference and every single game for the rest of the season would be against conference opponents. We would
would have another ranked game against Louisiana Tech, and I knew that the people watching at home couldn't believe that there were two Conference USA teams ranked at the polls. Our defense would make some good plays with goal to goal, getting a stop, and that would force Louisiana Tech to take three. Taylor Harris was looking comfortable in the offense, and Andrew Johnson, who had been becoming a star player this year, was making more plays. And like always, Taylor Harris didn't forget that he had Blair Hunter on the right side. So far this year, the whole reason that our team has been playing this well has been our defense, as they've been making key stops when needed. And just look at how happy I was about that interception. Following that, we would have a long drive, and Rick Pollock would be able to capitalize, and what would be another dominating victory. Arguably, our biggest game of the season was up next against a formidable Tulane, as we would have most of our recruits coming for this game. We ended up losing the game last year against Tulane, what would be a high-scoring affair. So I wasn't pleased when early in the first quarter we were down by multiple possessions, but it seemed like Rick Pollock had a knack of finding the end zone when we were inside the 10-yard line. Even though Taylor Harris is a left-handed quarterback, he sure loved rolling out to the right and throwing across his body, which is a cardinal sin. But he was able to get a big play to Mark Williams, and down by six with 40 seconds left in the second quarter, he was able to find Rick Pollock out of the backfield. The Green Wave would get a field goal before halftime, leading to us being down by three. But coming out of halftime, I scripted a great drive as we were able to get all the way down to the end zone, and our defense was finally able to get us a stop with the lead. And Taylor Harris found Andrew Johnson, who was able to break away from a defender, and he was going to be able to take it all the way down to the end zone for a touchdown. Tulane was able to score right back, so we were making sure that we held on to the ball and we weren't going to let them get it back, as our defense hadn't been playing well this game. And we were able to do just that, as each team would score a pair of touchdowns, but we would still win by three. Rick Pollock would end up having another great game, and after that game, we had a decent amount of recruits commit to the team. It'd be a culture shock for us traveling to Texas for the next one. And eight games into the season, after our win against Tulane, we were sitting alone at the top of the conference. It wouldn't be until late in the first half when a team would finally score. And let me just take a moment to say how nice this field is with the mountains in the background. It really does look good. I couldn't let the beauty of this stadium get in my head, though, as I still had an offense and defense to run. Taylor Harris able to find Blair Hunter on the right side. And from there, the play action would fool the defense, leading to Mark Williams being wide open for a touchdown. A pair of touchdowns from each team would be the score going into halftime as Taylor Harris is able to find Blair Hunter to start out the third quarter. And only a couple plays later, Harris was able to show great patience as he waited for his tight end to get wide open. And late in the fourth, everything was looking good as our defense got another stop and we were up by seven points, but Harris made a terrible throw. And that play would be detrimental as the defender was able to get a pick six. I started cussing out the offensive coordinator next to me. And on the very next drive, we had a three and out due to our receiver not wanting to catch the ball. From there, UTEP would run a perfect drive as they ended up killing the clock and kicking a game-winning field goal as we had our second loss of the season. Luckily for us, we had a five-star running back commit to our program right after that game in Blake Harley, and he was looking like he could be a good future running back for us. We had another away game against Tulsa on the very next week, and even with that loss, we were still sitting at the top of the conference. We were looking to get off to a better start than we did last game, and Andrew Johnson wanted to continue making plays like he had been all season. And the diversity this team was showing as Rick Pollock was left wide open and after spinning away from a couple defenders, he was able to get close to the five-yard line. And on fourth and goal with 20 seconds left, we ended up going for it, which ended up paying off. Tied at 14 late in the third, Harris was able to throw a great pass over the top to Chip Johnson. He was able to get close all the way down to the five-yard line. And from there, Harris was able to find the other Johnson on the left side. Our defense hadn't been playing well this game as they gave up another touchdown, but Harris made one of the best throws I had seen all season, finding Andrew Johnson yet again. And our defense is finally able to get a stop, leading to us running out the rest of the clock as we ended up winning by seven points. We'd be traveling to take on the Blue Raiders in our next one. And only up by four with two minutes left in the first half, Harris found Chip Johnson, who was able to somehow get away from a couple defenders, getting close to the red zone. And a couple plays later, with only 30 seconds left in the first half, Harris was able to find our backup running back, Jacob Fitch, after he ran over a guy and got a touchdown. And our first drive of the second half went smoothly as Rick Pollock was able to get more points on the board and what would be a dominating win for the Pirates in a game that Taylor Harris threw for over four touchdowns. The recruiting class at this point had some good players in it, but overall wasn't looking that good. And our next game against FAU was going to determine the rest of the season. FAU was ranked number seven in the nation and the winner of this game would win the conference championship. So it wouldn't be good that FAU would draw first blood against us. And yes, you are seeing the score correctly. We have four points on the board due to our defense getting two safeties. And to this point, our offense had been struggling immensely, leading to those being our only points on the board until Andrew Johnson was able to get open yet again, leading to a weird halftime score and us being up by four. As mentioned, this game would be extremely important as the Conference USA didn't have a conference championship, so this game would be the deciding factor of who's going to become the champion at the end of this game. So thankfully, our offense is finally starting to move the ball and Zeph Carter made his first appearance this video. And on the very next drive on third and two, our linebacker was able to read the quarterback perfectly, getting an interception. But that wouldn't matter as our offense turned the ball right over and FAU was able to score a touchdown. And we were looking like we were in a really good spot, but all of a sudden we were down by three points with two minutes left in the game. I was confident in Harris's ability to get us down the field as he had been doing this all season long. And with only 20 seconds left on second and goal, he was able to roll to the right side, getting us a touchdown. And from there, we were able to hold on to our lead, getting a four point victory. And as mentioned, that would lead to us winning our conference championship. Our last game of the season would see us taking on 10 and 3 BYU in the Fiesta Bowl. And even though bowl games didn't always mean the most, it would be great for our school prestige if we were able to win this game, leading to more recruits committing in the future. So thankfully, our defense got off to a good start, getting a three and out, and our offense was able to get a third down conversion. And later on that drive, Chip Johnson ran the slant route perfectly, getting a touchdown. Even though the Cougars were unranked, they were still a really good opponent as they were 10 and 3, and Harris was seeing the field beautifully, finding Chip Johnson yet again. And even though we were stopped later on that drive, we were able to get a field goal, extending our lead to 10. At this point of the game so far, our defense have been playing absolutely amazing as BYU has been shut out throughout the majority of the first half. And with goal to goal, like always, Rick Pollock was able to get a touchdown. So coming out of the first half, the BYU quarterback knew that they needed to 
the key drive to get back in this game and they're able to get a touchdown cutting down the lead but it didn't matter as our offense have been playing extremely well this game and rick pollock was able to go around to the right side for another touchdown and from there i'd be hoisted into the air as we ended up winning that game and only a couple of years it had been crazy to see the progress that this team has made as taylor harris would end up having one of his best games all season unc would go on to win the national championship and taylor harris was able to improve on all of his stats compared to last year and rick pollock had some decent receiving yards along with almost cracking a thousand rushing yards following a conference championship and a fiesta bowl win there was gonna be a lot of hype going into next season we would have a decent amount of people leaving including one of my favorite targets in our tight end mark williams and after our defensive coordinator left for a better job we ended up signing a terrible one thankfully for us we got a transfer from wake forest and signing day was looking extremely good as we were able to get five more people and even though this recruiting class is looking a little small with us only getting three four stars we were able to capitalize on getting two five stars and i would end up redshirting one of the five stars and blake harley so rick pollock could continue being our number one back the team was looking pretty decent going into year three along with taylor harris being a 93 overall and there would be big things going into next season as we'd end up joining a new conference and tulane and fau would follow suit as well